R6, rational exponents. Negative exponent, we let A be a non-zero real number. N, N will be any integer. A here, that will be the base, and negative N will be the exponents. When you guys have a negative exponents, you can rewrite it to 1 over A to the power of N. And the negative exponent does not indicate that the expression in which it appears is negative. So some students write it like a to the power of negative 1 equal to negative a. Okay, this is not true. Okay, make sure you guys remember this negative exponent formula. Example 1, using the definition of a negative exponent. I saw you guys for the first one. 10 is the base to the power of negative 3, okay? So by the formula of negative exponent, we're going to rewrite it to 1 over a to the power of n. So same idea for this guy. That will be 1 over 10 to the power of 3. So I want you guys to try b, c, and d. Okay, B, negative 5 to the power of negative 1. This negative 1, the exponent, only apply for the 5 here. Okay, this is not related to this negative. Example 1, using the definition of a negative exponent. Okay, let me do it with you guys for the first one. 10 to the power of negative 3. Since the exponent is negative, we'll be applied the negative exponent formula. Okay, so that will be equal to 1 over 10 to the power of 3. And 10 to the power of 3 means 1,000. Okay, so final answer, 1 over 1,000. Now I want you guys to try to do B, C, and D. For the B, the negative 1 only applies for the 5 here. Okay, So you could divide it to negative 1 over 5 to the power of 1. So 5 to the power of 1 is just equal to 5. C, m n to the power of negative 4. That's a no parenthesis. So the negative 4 exponent only applies for the n here. Okay, so we keep m outside of it, or you could put it on the top. So m times 1 over n to the power of 4. And d, you could see there's a parenthesis here, means the negative 4, it will apply for the m and also for the n. Okay, so that will be 1 over mn to the power of 4. Okay, right? You could keep this one as a final answer, or you could distribute the 4 for each of them. Okay, negative rational exponents. So look at this guy. A to the power of negative m over n. Okay, this is for any rational number, m over n, and any non-zero real number of a. So we do have the base of a. This is a non-zero real number. So we could just apply the negative rational exponent. The negative means 1 over. So 1 over a to the power of m over n. Okay, you guys can think like this way. I do have an a to the power of negative m and over 1, okay? Usually, we don't put the 1 here, right? But if I write on it here, when you have a negative exponent, you could think about it, you're going to flip the a to the power of m to the bottom. So that will become 1 over a to the power of m. 
Look at this example. I have a, a to the power of negative m over b to the power of negative n. Both of them have the negative exponents. So for the a here, for the numerator, I could flip it to the bottom. And for the denominator, I could flip it to the top. So the final answer will be b to the power of n over a to the power of m. Okay, just keep this concept. When it's on the numerator, we have a negative exponent, we could flip it to the bottom. When you have a negative exponent on the denominator, you could flip it to the top. And one more time, the negative exponent does not indicate that the expression is negative, okay? Okay, Coulson rule. Let m and n be integers and a be a non-zero real number. So I have a to the power of m over a to the power of n. This is equal to a m minus n. Okay, when it's divided, they have the same base. You could subtract the exponent. Okay, example two. So for a, we could distribute the negative for both of them. Okay, remember, when you have a negative exponent on the numerator, you could flip it to the bottom. When you have a negative exponent for the denominator, you could flip it to the top. Okay, right? And then 9 times 9, 81 over 16. If you could simplify it, simplify it. If not, this is going to be your final answer. Okay, B, we could apply the Coulson rule. They do have the same base, which is going to be 15. And then I have exponent. So divided, I'm going to subtract it. So 15 to the power of x minus 3. Okay. C. Okay, we do have a negative exponent on the denominator. You, you could flip it to the top, make it like positive. Or you could just use the quotient rule, 4 minus negative 9. Okay, 4 minus negative 9. That would become y to the power of 13. Okay, last one here. We could take care of this number, simplify it, and then take care of the exponent with the same base. So we do have a, x minus 12, and then b to the power of 11 minus 5. Okay, this one you could divide by 17. Okay, divided by 17, you're going to get 2. Divided by the 17, you're going to get 3 here. Okay, subtract it. You will see we do have a negative exponent. For our final answer, we always keep the positive exponent. Especially on your exam, please keep it as a positive exponent. So what we're going to do? So this is on the top, right? So you're going to flip it to the bottom. So final answer, 2b to the power of 6 over 3a to the power of 4. Okay, now we're going to use the quotient rule and the negative exponents together. And then make sure you write your answer without negative exponents. So for the first one, you could distribute the negative 3. Distribute for the 2 and distribute for the 4 first. So here you're going to multiply it 2 to the power of 3, x to the power of negative 12. Okay, so 2 to the power 3 means 2 times 2 times 2. You're going to get the x. And then for the x, they do have the same base. You want to add up the exponents. So 3 plus negative 12. Which is 
negative 9. And this is a negative exponent, so we're going to flip it to the bottom. So 40 over x to the power of 9. Okay, try to do B and C. Okay, B. So these two guys, you could divide by 15, right? Divided by 15, you're going to get 2. Divided by 15, you're going to get 3 here. And then here, you could use the quotient rule 4 minus negative 6. And negative 9 minus 3. Okay, so that will be r to the power of 10. And this is going to be negative 12. Again, we don't want to keep the negative exponent as a final answer, so we're going to flip it to the bottom. C. You want to distribute the negative 2 for both of them. Okay, it applies for the 4 and also applies for the B here. Same idea for this guy. Negative 3, distribute to the 4 and distribute to the B. And on the bottom, do the same thing. And I try to reorder it. I'm going to put um, the same base together. So 4 to the power of negative 2 times 4 to the power of negative 3. And then the B here, 3 times negative 2, you're going to get negative 6. This is going to be positive 3. Okay, right? Okay, I'm going to take care of the numerator first. So this is a negative 2 plus negative 3. And this is a negative 6 plus 3 here. Okay, simplify it. Now, I'm going to take care of the bottom using the quotient rule. So this is a negative 5 minus 4. And this is a negative 3 minus negative 12. So you're going to get this guy. And one more time, we can have uh, the negative exponent for the final answer. So we're going to flip it to the bottom. That will be your final answer. Okay, the expressions a to the power of 1 over n. Okay, and n is even. This is talking about the, um, the nth root of a, okay? And then a has to be greater than zero, okay? I want you guys to remember that a to the power of 1 over n, this is talking of nth root of a, okay? And when n is even, a has to be strictly greater than zero okay it cannot be have a negative number okay for example n equal to two so we do have a uh, square root of four okay you know that that's gonna be equal to two when we have a negative number with a negative four square root of negative four this is gonna be not a real number Okay, we may learn the compressed number later on, but right now we're going to consider this is not a real number or not a real solution. Okay, so keep in mind that uh, n is a even means 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay, it has to be positive number. One more time, example, 1 over 8, n is a even, right? So the a here has to be greater than 0. Otherwise, that will be not a real number. Okay, but here, a to the power of 1 over n, the nth root of a. So if n is odd number, it doesn't really matter. For example, 
when n is equal to 3. 3 is the odd number. We can have uh, 27. Negative 27. Even though a is less than 0, that's fine, okay? Because this is an odd number, okay? That would be equal to negative 3. And for here, they want to talk about when you have a to the power of 1 over n times n, that's also equal to a. But keep in mind, a has to be greater than 0 when n is an even number. Okay? And this one, when n is odd number, doesn't really matter for the a. Okay, let's try to do it together. Example 4. Number 1, 49 to the power of 1 half. Okay, so we could rewrite it. 49, we could put it like 7 squared. Okay, n is a given number, so these guys are positive, so this is good. And 1 half and times 2, you could cancel out, so that's going to be equal to 7. Okay, B. The n is even, but for this one, the one half is only applied for the 144, not with the negative, okay? So we could put the negative outside, and then 144, you could rewrite it to 12 square, okay? And then you multiply it, you cancel out the two, so that will become negative 12. C, n is a even number, so a has to be greater than zero. Right, but this is a negative number, so not a real number. D, 64 to the power of 1 over 6. Okay, 64, we could rewrite it to 2 to the power of 6. And then we cancel out 6 times 1 over 6, so that would be equal to 2. Okay, ye. Sam, my dear, n is a even number, but we do have a preference, so this guy has to be greater than zero. So answer is not a real number. And then f. There's a no preference here, so the exponent one over six is only applied for the sixty-four. Okay, final answer, negative 2. G, this guy, uh, n is an odd number, so we don't care if this is a positive or negative. And then 125, we could rewrite it to negative 5 to the power of 3. Simplify it, negative 5. And this one. One third is only applied for the 64. So negative is going to be outside of it. And 64, we could put 4 times 4 times 4, right? So final answer, negative 4. Okay, expressions. A to the power of m over n. Okay, we could break it down to a to the power of 1 over n, and then m is going to be outside. Or another way around, you could put a to the power of m, and then parenthesis, and then 1 over n. Example 5. 81 to the power of 3 over 4. This is the fourth root of 81. So we're going to rewrite it to 3 to the power of 4. And one more time, remind you guys, this is represent your n. n is even this guy has to be greater than zero. Okay, so now this is good. We cancel out. So three to the power of three, which is gonna be 27. B, 25 to the power of three over two. So we can rewrite it five squared to the power of three over two. So cancel out the two. 5 to the power of 3, which is going to be 125. And then C. 
negative 4 to the power of 5 over 2. 5 over 2 is only applied for the 4 here. Okay, so the negative doesn't really matter. So negative is going to be outside here. 4, we could be what's like 2 squared. So 2 times 5 over 2, which is going to be negative 2 to the power of 5. So negative 32. D, negative 64 to the power of 2 over 3. N is an odd number, so it doesn't matter this is a positive or negative. So we write it negative 4 to the power of 3. You could cancel out the 3 here, which is negative 4 squared. 16. And then 200... 16 to the power of negative 2 over 3. So that will be 6 times 6 times 6, which is going to be equal to 216. And then 3 and 3, you could cancel out. Negative exponent. So this guy will become 1 over 6 squared, which is 1 over 36. Last one. Negative 100, that's a preference to the power of 3 over 2. N is a even number. So A has to be greater than 0. But this is a negative 100. So not a real number. Make sure you guys show all your work on the exam, okay? Definitions and rules for exponents. Let R and S be rational numbers. So R and S are rational numbers. Remember the definition of rational numbers? That would be the integer over the integer. So you could consider the R and the S. That would be the fraction. Okay. So we still can apply the product rule, the quotient rule. When they multiply together, when they have the same base, you're going to add it up together. When it's a division, we could apply the quotient rule, the exponent is going to be subtract. And negative exponent, so when it's a negative exponent here, you could flip it to the bottom, so flip it to the denominator. Same idea with the power rules. Example 6, so let's try to do the example together. A, we do have the base 18 to the power of 1 half, times 18 to the power of 7 over 2 divided by 18 to the power of 3 okay so we do have the same base here we could just apply the product rule and the quotient rule and one more time r and s in here are rational numbers so 1 half 7 over 2 this is the rational numbers 3 also 3 over 1 this is also the rational numbers so we can add up this two. We do have the same base, so we're going to add up the exponent. So they do have the same denominator, so 1 half plus 7 over 2, that would be 8 over 2, which is going to be 4 in here. And then apply the quotient rule, we subtract the exponent. Part B, 100 to the power of 3 over 2. This is a square root. Think about it. Square root of 100. So uh, before I apply the square root, I could write it like this way. All right? 3 times 1 half, that would be 3 over 2. And then square root of 100, that would be equal to 10. And this guy, we could break it down again. We do have a to the exponent 1 over 4. And 16, we can rewrite it to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 to the power of 4. Okay, right? One more time. This guy, this is a square root of 100, which is going to be equal to 10. And the 16, we can rewrite it to 2 to the power of 4. Now, we multiply it this guy. So we're left with the 2 to the power of negative 3. And then 10 to the power of 3 means 10 times 10 times 10. Okay, then this is a negative exponent. So this guy become 1 over to 2 to the power of 3. Okay, and this is a 2 times 2 times 2. 
you're gonna get a thousand over eight. Okay, divided by eight, you're gonna get one hundred twenty-five. Okay, C. You could take care of the number first, four times five, which is gonna be equal to twenty. And then for the Z, we do have the stamp base, so you could add up the exponent here. Get the stamp denominator. The LCD will be twenty, right? Okay. Okay, D. We do have a parenthesis. The whole thing gonna take square. So you could distribute the square for each of them. So five square times m to the power of four over three times two. Okay, distribute it like one by one. Same idea for this guy. Distribute to the m, distribute to the x, and distribute to the n also. Okay, right. Four times two, you're gonna get eight over three. Two times two, you're gonna get four over three. So five times five, which is gonna be twenty-five here. And then they do have the same base, so add up the exponent here, and then n. They do have the same base for the n, so add up the exponent. And this guy, the cube root of eight. Okay, if I wait one more step, that will be two to the power of three here. Okay, so cancel out. You're left with the two. Okay. Okay, Yi, you're gonna distribute one by one here. So when you multiply it, they do have the same base. That will be three over seven plus four over seven. And then minus five y. Again, end up these two exponent. So here that will be seven over seven, which is one. So you only left with the y here. And this guy will be 14 over 7, which is going to be square. Okay, factoring expressions with negative or rational exponents. Factor out the least power of the variable or variable expressions. So you can see we do have a negative exponent and we want to do the factoring. So first, think about it, 28 and 21. What is the greatest common factor? You're going to factor out the 7 here. And then, you do have a negative exponent. You always want to factor out the least power. So which one is going to be smaller? Negative 5 is smaller or negative 2 is smaller? That will be negative 5, right? So you want to factor out y to the power of negative 5. So this is our GCF, 7y to the power of negative 5. Since the first term, you take out the whole thing here. You're only left with the 4. Okay, you could multiply it. 7 times 4, 28y to the power of negative 5. And this one, 21, you take out the 7, you're left with the 3. Okay, you may need to figure out why you get y to the power of 3 here. Remember, when you multiply it, you're going to add up the exponents so negative 5 plus 3 which is going to be equal to negative 2 okay or another way to think is going to be negative 5 plus something equal to negative 2 after you do the factoring i would highly recommend you guys try to distribute it back and double check your answer okay Okay, B, 18 and 12, what is the GCF here? That would be 6, right? Okay, and then this n to the power of 4 over 3 and n to the power of 1 third. Which one is going to be smaller? 1 third is going to be smaller, right? So we're going to factor out 6n to the power of 1 third. Okay, one more time here. 1 over 3 plus 1, which is going to be equal to 4 over 3. Or you could try 4 over 3 minus 1 third. That's going to be equal to 1. 
okay last one uh, we're gonna factor out the least power so we're gonna factor out the negative 2 over 5 you're gonna take out the whole thing here you left with the 1 and this guy you're gonna do 3 over 5 minus negative 2 over 5 you're gonna left with the 1 here and then try to combine the night terms you're gonna get this Okay, last example. Simplifying a fraction with negative exponent. Where do we solve with only positive exponents? So first, we're going to take care of the negative exponent. This guy, that will become 1 over x. And this is going to be 1 over y. And x to the power of negative 2, which is going to be 1 over x squared. And this is 1 over y squared. Okay, right? It becomes the compressed fraction. Remember how to do that? First, we're going to find the LCD, okay? We're going to look at these four terms. 1 over x, 1 over y, 1 over x squared, and 1 over y squared, okay? So we have x, y, x squared, and y squared. What is the LCD? LCD will be x squared times y squared. And then we're going to multiply the LCD to the numerator and also to the denominator. We're going to distribute 1 by 1. So this guy, 1 over x times x squared y squared. You cancel out one of the x. So that will be x times y squared. And then this guy times 1 over y. So that will be x squared. And then cancel out one of the y. Okay. And then on the bottom, distribute 1 by 1. So that will be x squared, x squared cancel out. You're left with y squared minus x squared you should get this one after you multiply the lcd you shouldn't have the compressed fraction anymore okay if you still have the compressed fraction that means you make a mistake okay now look at the numerator here can you guys factor out you're gonna factor out the x and y right on the top so you're left with y plus x. On the denominator, you could apply the formula. Remember a squared minus b squared? That is equal to a plus b times a minus b. Simplify it. Cross out the y plus x. Final answer will be x y over y minus x. That's it.